this Friday, on June the 7th, I will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of my ordination as an elder in the United Methodist Church. Now, frankly, I can't believe it. It doesn't feel like it was 30 years ago. It feels like it was yesterday at many moments, and sometimes it feels like it was a lot longer ago than that. You know how that can be, how time can be like an accordion. Sometimes it gets broader and sometimes it gets compressed back together. In 1994, I was serving as pastor at Cockrell Hill United Methodist Church. I talked about that church just recently. And in my ministry there, I felt like I was the indispensable person. And so, for the years that I was pastor there, for the first three years of my ministry there, through my ordination as elder, I took no days off. Whoops. That was a great big mistake on my part, but I didn't know it at the time. Never occurred to me that it would be a problem. I figured, oh, you know, they'll be happy. I'm working full time and I'm here every day. I'm not taking days off in the week. I'm not taking holidays and vacation days. I'm working, right? Thank God no one said amen. I'm lucky. (laughs) Then I started having nightmares. And I had one nightmare that lingered with me again and again and again and again and again. And in this nightmare, I would finish my sermon on Sunday morning, I would finish worship service, I'd walk back to my office, I'd take my stole off, I'd take my robe off, and under the robe there'd be another stole and another robe. So I'd take that stole off and I'd take that robe off, and lo and behold, there'd be another robe and stole on underneath that. So I'd take off that stole and that robe and yet another Robe and stole, stole and robe, stole and robe, stole and robe, again and again and again, layer after layer after layer of vestments coming off. And no me, no Greg to be found anywhere until I would finally wake up in a pool of sweat with wet sheets uh, tangled up incapable of getting out of bed because I was so tangled up in the sheets. It's obvious. It's obvious that I wasn't taking Sabbath time. It's obvious that I wasn't taking rest. It's obvious that I wasn't taking care of myself. And it wore heavy on me. Sabbath rest is very important. The Hebrew word Shabbat comes from another Hebrew word Shabbat, which means to cease or desist. It means to stop and do nothing. Sabbath means rest. It means to cease one's labors. It means to desist from doing work. It means to quit doing things that separate you from God and family and community. It means literally to stop. Shabbat, Sabbath, means to rest. And that's really hard for us to do these days in this world of constant motion, constant action, constant work day in and day out, never ending, never ceasing. We're constantly doing. We're constantly in motion. And if it's not work we're doing, it's activities that are volunteer to help others or communities or friends. We're constantly doing. When do we stop? I'm guilty of this one, my friends, not stopping, not ceasing work. It's hard to find time to rest, but we're called to stop. Sabbath rest calls us to stop. So important is Sabbath, 
is the concept of rest, is the idea of stopping from work, that it's incorporated in the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, where depending upon how you number them, it's usually number four, you shall have no other gods before me, you shall not make any idols, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What does it mean to remember the Sabbath day? to keep it holy. To be blunt, we don't do a very good job of that in our world today. We don't remember it and we don't keep it holy. We're always working on it. We're always trying to do better and we're failing. Which begs the question, what is the Sabbath day? Well, it's Sunday, right? Hmm, no. Saturday is the Sabbath day. In English, we use the Latin Roman name for the day, Saturn's day. But in most other Western languages, they don't do that. In Russian, it's sabotu. In, sab- in Spanish, it's saboda or sabodu. And so forth. The Sabbath day, it's built into the name of the day. Sunday got to be thought of as the Christian Sabbath because it's the day we go to worship. But that's a mistake because Sunday is actually the Lord's Day, the weekly celebration of the resurrection of Jesus, a mini Easter, if you will. Sabbath day is a day of rest, a day of ceasing, a day of stopping, a time of pause. And Sabbath rest is important with family, with friends, and with God. Sabbath rest is important. It's critical. And no matter what day you do it on, it should be done. Not because of any rule in the Ten Commandments, but because it's good for our health, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health requires rest, requires recovery, requires downtime to think, to consider, to not do, to not work, to be still. Being still is hard. The 2020 General Conference held in 2024 had a theme, be still and know that I am God. It's taken from Psalm 46 verse 10. It was a great theme, but we didn't do much stilling at General Conference. We didn't spend much time being still, and yet that's a large part of what Sabbath rest is supposed to be about. Be still and know that I am God. Be present to God. Be open to God's presence to and with us. Be still and know your neighbor as yourself. Be still and care for family and friends. Be still and be open to the needs of those around you, not for your work or your service or your giving, but yourself. Be still and know the grace and love of God. Last weekend, I made a trip to Oklahoma with my husband, and while we were there, I got to enjoy time with family. I got to enjoy meals, eating. One of Cade's favorite places to eat is Hawaiian Bros. It's a Hawaiian food chain. And we went there and chowed down and had a wonderful time. And I especially enjoyed the time with my nephew, Riker, and his humor, often um, wild humor. That time of down being down, downtime, that time of rest, that time of pause was so very important for me. It gave me a chance to think and to pray. It gave me a chance to be still and to listen. It gave me an opportunity to stop. 
That's what Sabbath is all about. Stopping. Listening to God. Listening to your family. Listening to the still soft voice in your heart, which is God's Holy Spirit speaking to us, calling us to care for ourselves and others. We can actually practice the first and second commands of Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. We can actually practice these first and second commands of Jesus when we take time for Sabbath rest. It's essential for us. Perhaps we're so terrible at living the first primary commandment loving the Lord your God, because we're so awful at living the second one too, which is like it, because we don't take Sabbath time. Stop. Time. And I confess to you that I'm terrible at it. It's a challenge due to the pressures, not just of the ministry, but of life in the 21st century. I want to challenge us to realize that Sabbath-keeping isn't a matter of rules and regulations. It's not a matter of the law or the Ten Commandments. It's not a have-to-do-to-be-saved kind of thing, or to be a Christian, or to follow Jesus. It's something we get to do. It's something we're privileged to do. It's something we're called to do as part of the family of God. As part of the community of faith. Jesus said the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Sabbath rest is a gift of God's grace for us. Built into the very structure of creation. In the creation story it says that on the seventh day God rested. And we are called to rest too. If only we'll do it. If only we'll stop and rest. I want to encourage us to stop and to rest, to find time of Sabbath, peace and joy and hope to find time with God and with family, to find time with yourself. Stop and rest. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and may God's people say, Let me Well